Good morning all and welcome to our morning prayer. In the name of God, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins and to seek His grace that through His Son Jesus Christ we may offer ourselves in service. Let us worship and praise Him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in right triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in song. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, his hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We come to a moment, a moment of penitence. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen to the Word of God and we have our Psalm of the day. Psalm 23 and Psalm 43 can be found, can be found on page 630 of the Anglican Prayer Book and 656 of the Anglican Prayer Book. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup will be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give judgment for me, O God. Take up my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from deceitful and wicked men. For you are God my refuge. Why have you turned me away? Why must I go like a mourner? Because the enemy oppresses me. O send out your light and your truth, and let them lead me. Let them guide me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I shall go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight, and to harp I shall sing your praises. O oh God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, my soul, and why so unquiet within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will praise him yet, who is my deliverer and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We have our first reading of the day. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, reading from verse 14 to 31, taken from the New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did 
not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much as of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so. Some gathered more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, as, it, as much as each needed. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. Morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses commanded them, and it did not become foul, and there was no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. For six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out together, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instruction? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Here ends the first lesson. The Song of Zechariah Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now have our second reading for the day. The second reading is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 1 to 17, taken from the New Revised Standard Version, Anglicite. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. They were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as, an example, as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them, to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. 
the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, the bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Here ends the second lesson. The song of the church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought to the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us together, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. We say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. The collect for today. The collect for Corpus Christi. God of grace and glory, in the Paschal mystery you established a new covenant of reconciliation and grafted us into the body of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Empower us with his love and make us one, as he prayed that we should be one. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace, O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love for you and one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Today we will have a message that's preached from one of our youth on Sunday night, um, Caden. Our reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 3, reading from verse 9. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. We have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. The other word of the Lord. Taming the tongue. And what does the Bible have to say about gossip? Gossip is common. People like to get People like to get the third bit of insider knowledge about others, but is gossiping wrong? What does the Bible say about have, saying about taming the tongue? And how does God view gossip? Those who spread rumors and falsehood can cause serious damage to the reputations of innocent people. And God reminds us that we will have to answer for the words that we choose to speak. Not only is gossip a normal thing today, but there are even people who consider it a positive thing. But is that really the case? Is gossip really a beneficial and unifying force that in the, that in the, vast, majority, that in the vast majority of the cases? Will those who regularly engage in communication that, destroy, that destructively harms others use the slant to justify their continued maiming of others. Now there are also gossip addicts. Those are people who take in the information so take in the information so much that they, it's as if their identif- their identity literally becomes that gossip that they want to talk about. They become addicted to hearing things about others and passing them along. When you see such a person approaching or hear their voice, it's as, if you already, it's, as, it's as if you already know that the gossip is already coming to you. It's as if these people fall under a trap where they now continuously, consciously or unconsciously parading themselves with gossip and that becomes to cloud their judgment and knowledge. They seem so driven to search out to speak of the shortcomings and failures of others that they start to lose sight of their own lives and their own shortcomings. But what does God have to say? God instructed the congregation of the children of Israel in Leviticus chapter 9. You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people. Gossipers love to secretly reveal embarrassing and shameful details of associates and even friends. Furthermore, their desire to share is so great that it's like a burning fire on their lips and they feel as if they need to spread their word across. But this relates to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27, where God speaks plainly about a gossiper. An, un- an ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on his lips like a burning fire. But gossip does serious damage to people, for there is no need for a costly survey to find out whether costly is actually damaging the people because if you look at the people whose reputations and relations have already been damaged by gossip, I'm sure that they'll have no problem telling you that gossip is an evil thing and God's word and God's word speaks plainly about gossip. Now James, our half brother of Christ, explains why gossip explain why explains why gossip occurs, which brings us back to, cha- to James chapter three, verse eight. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of a deadly poison. But sadly, it seems that everyone eventually finds him or herself the the recipient of gossip and tempted to gossip about others. The tendency to gossip is part of human nature, and taming the tongue requires God's help. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. And it says that anyone, if anyone considers himself religious 
and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue. He deceives himself and his religion becomes worthless. These are all strong words, but according to this verse, the religion of those who slander is worthless. And those who gossip will eventually have to answer for it. Because isn't it uncomfortable to think that you or I would be made to answer for every time that we've gossiped? Gossip is so serious that unless we are repenting and seeking God's help for taming the tongue, we will indeed need to answer for it. And if you look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, it says, But I say to you, for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words will be justified, and your words will be condemned. The words we listen to, as well as those that come out of our mouths, indicate us ourselves like deep inside our own character. How we communicate is also something that our Creator takes very seriously. It is also clear that gossip greatly angers our Heavenly Father, just as much as a father becomes angry at a child for hurting each other, for example. But is gossip enough to make God angry? Is gossip a sin? We have not read all the scriptures yet in the Bible on the subject, but Without a doubt, the answer is yes. While some have tempted to rank gossip as just a tiny sin, we have to remember that each sin spiritually fatally, fatally damages us spiritually and, we need, and needs to be repented of. Now, how many people would you suppose think of gossip as unrighteousness, wickedness, and evil-mindedness? Obviously, God does. But having listened among these other obvious evils surely answers the question of whether gossip really is a sin. And it shows the importance of us taming the tongue. So yes, it is a sin. There is a scripture that reads, where James summarizes in James chapter, chapter 3, verse 6, that the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. But there's also a contrast where Apostle Paul tells us how to use our words to benefit ourselves and others. And he encourages us to let no corrupt word proceed out your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let all the bitterness, wrath, anger, and evil, speaking all be put away from you, with all malice, and be kind to one another instead, tender-hearted, forgiving, all to one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. And so with all that being said, I will leave you all to ponder on that. Amen. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all people, all creatures, forever and ever. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us, and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but by the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Heavenly Father, your Son promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us, answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. 
May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Thank you.